Namaste, hello and welcome to the eighth verse of Uladu Narpadu. And uh, today we're going to get into a subject that's very dear to my heart. And so let's go right into the verse. Know thus, whoever worships the nameless and formless reality in whatever form, giving it whatever name, that is the way to see the nameless and formless reality in that name and form, because it is possible to see it thus. However, becoming one with the reality, having known one's own truth, alone is seeing in truth, that one is not the ego, the individual who worships and sees names and forms, but only the real self, who never sees names and forms, and having thereby subsided in the nameless and formless truth of that reality. In other words, being the reality alone is truly seeing the reality. What a wonderful verse, huh? And this brings up one of the most beautiful, delightful, lovable, <laughs> and exalted features of Ramana's teaching, which is that it's not about what you do for a living or how renounced you are or your diet or your sexuality or your uh, professed beliefs in any particular system. It's not about that at all. Uh, you can believe any way you want. You can worship any way you want. Any name, any form is as good as any other. Why? Because Brahman is everything. In everyone. It is the substrate, the indwelling consciousness, the awareness of all. So, what is it that gives us so much distress in life that we have to seek self-realization as a remedy? Well, out of ignorance, we go chasing desires. I want this, I want that. Huh? And <laughs> conventional religion would say, well, no, 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 don't chase that desire. Don't chase that other desire. Those are bad desires. Chase this desire and this other desire. Those are good desires. Huh? That's a step on the way, I suppose. But really the problem is in the I that desires. That is the ignorance. Seeing the individual, seeing the self as being separate. That is the root cause of everything else. Now, of course, there's karma and all that. And going chasing after those desires is going to cause a lot of people a lot of stress and misery. And so, of course, that stress and misery comes right back to us in the form of karma. And because we want to have an I, that karma has an address, huh? comes right back to the same I that created it. Now, we may not remember things we did in past lives, but still, we have to suffer and deal with the consequences. That is the law. So if we want to be free from that, from wherever we start, Huh? From, from whatever position we find ourselves, at the time that we realize the necessity of self-realization, that serves as our launching pad, that serves as the beginning of our journey back to the self, back to Brahman. It doesn't matter. It's not necessary to convert from one religion to another. Uh, Ramana doesn't expect people from the West, for example, to come here and become Hindus. 
He doesn't want that at all. He respects whatever you are, but he's saying there's something deeper. He's saying, worship the nameless, formless reality <laughs> in whatever way you want. That's fine. He doesn't care about that. But come closer to the real reality. Uh -huh. In other words, any way that we see God as a name and form is like a dress. It's like a mask. Uh, that we put on top of God. Well, after all, that's what we do with the whole world, isn't it? We have our system of names and forms, our ontology, our worldview, our philosophy or whatever. And we, oh, and of course, our precious desires. And we lay that over the substrate of the nameless, formless reality and then we have our little private Disneyland, huh? our little entertaining world that we run around in, being this and that and such and such and I. <laughs> it really doesn't make any difference what flavor our overlay is, huh? what color our, our filtered glasses are, huh? our colored shades. They still block out the real reality underneath it all. So what Ramana is saying that come closer from wherever you are and realize this, realize that you are actually the one. You are actually the Brahman. You are actually the self. And when you do, then there's no more need to run after these desires. Huh? Why? Because you can have ecstasy all the time. <laughs> I was going to say whenever you want. <laughs> you know, I talked about this back in the, uh, uh, the series on Secret of the Golden Flower how when you have a process or a technique that delivers basically ecstasy on demand, it changes your relationship with ecstasy. All of a sudden, ecstasy is a lot cheaper. Huh? You know about market forces, huh? supply and demand in economics. If there's a big supply of something, the price goes down assuming the demand remains constant. So we all have a demand for ecstasy. We all have a desire, a need, actually, for happiness and bliss and ecstasy. So how do we uh, supply that need, that demand? Well, chasing after desires is one way. Intoxication, sex life, power, all the little, little uh, flashes of ecstasy that we can get from sense enjoyment. But that's very temporary. And it's incomplete also. It doesn't really go to the root of our being. It's very peripheral. It's very much on the surface. Then when we get into yoga and meditation, that goes a little bit deeper. That goes into the mind. And then we're able to manipulate the mind, set up the mind in a certain way. And those, uh, I should say, quaffs of ecstasy are a lot deeper uh, because they go deeper into one's being. But the best ecstasy, the best happiness is that which comes effortlessly <laughs> as a result of simply being. It doesn't require us to do anything. In fact, doing just kind of takes away from it. Better to just sit and do nothing and be happy. There's nothing to it.
Uh, that's the kind of bliss, that's the kind of ecstasy that comes from self-realization, from knowing what we are in reality. That nameless, formless, boundaryless self of pure awareness with no object, Brahman. So when we realize that we are the Brahman, then all of these other secondary and tertiary forms of attaining happiness and ecstasy seem to be more or less useless, or at least um, to use a, a programming term, uh, deprecated. <laughs> They're still there and they still work, but you know, who needs just a little shot of ecstasy now and then when you can have it all the time and a better quality? The real thing, uh, uncut, <laughs> 200 proof ecstasy. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why Bhagwan, yeah, you know, a, a lot of people who imitate Bhagwan, who, who go around talking about self-realization and making huge uh, fees from it, are you can tell they're influenced by their audience because they talk a lot about love and all these other things. But those are secondary. Those are, those are on the surface. You see? Yeah, of course we should love people. But what better love than to be the uh, root of the self? Huh? That from their love and, and compassion and ecstasy and happiness and everything spring naturally without a need for an object. See? In other words, being loved is nice when it happens, but it's always temporary. But loving is better. Why? Because when you love, you're in control of it. Huh? You turn it on and off. Better to just leave it on. <laughs> but love has an object, doesn't it? Therefore, it's a step down from the pure ecstasy of Brahman, which requires no object and is love itself. So, the best love for everyone, the best service for everyone, is to introduce them to the process, to the method for attaining Brahman themselves. Now, during this process, during the sadhana, there may be a need to restrict one's activities somewhat. Uh, mm, as much as practical. In other words, it's not for everybody to go sitting in a cave dressed in a loincloth. Huh? That's not for everybody. Maybe a few very rare people. One has to follow one's prarabdha karma, the ripened karma. So Bhagwan never told people to leave their job, to leave their family, huh? to change their place of residence or anything like that but rather right where you are, as you are right now, begin to inquire, who am I? What am I? From where is this thought I arising? And by concentrating on this thought I, I, the whole tree of ego is cut. And when it falls, it doesn't regrow again. And that's the real cure for all the suffering of life. Om Tatsat. Om Harihi Om.